everyone, welcome back, and uh, we're here again with Amr. And uh, today, I guess let's uh, you know we'll start out by getting a little update of how things have been going, and then kind of from there we can get a sense of you know where we should go in the future. And also, I'm just gonna not quiz him, but you know just kind of do a little quick sanity check on lead code skills to make sure that uh, Amr is generally where he needs to be in terms of knowing the the topics, and then offline the two of us can review a little bit more. But uh, yeah, Amr, if, uh, if you don't mind, would you uh, just give us a little bit of an update on how things are going so far in terms of where you've heard back from, and also, uh, you know, if any companies have gotten back to you and what you're kind of got in the future going on? Yeah, sure. So I applied to pretty much every fan company and non-fan company that you can uh, think of. I've mm -hmm. gotten a call back for an initial like, screening interview, the HR interview from Oracle. Mm -hmm. and the uh, online assessment for the new grad position at TikTok at ByteDance. Yeah. Awesome. And you, you mentioned to me offline that you took that OA and it went pretty well for the most part, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sometimes if you don't... So I think you mentioned you said you did optimal on the first two and then non-optimal but got a solution on the third. Yeah. So sometimes that'll result in a pass, sometimes they don't pass you, it, it honestly depends. and. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out, but uh, yeah, yeah sure. hopefully that they'll uh, they'll keep it going, and that would be great. So just to be clear, and you know, during the video, I'll actually put up that uh, the picture of that spreadsheet. So I saw you applied to some of the other places as well as well that you don't have a referral for yesterday. Yeah, I think you know, moving on, we should hopefully uh, you know just start sending out massive amounts of applications to all the rest of those places. The, the one exception for now just being pure storage because it looks like uh, we're going to be able to get a referral there yeah, and if that works out. Yeah, that's why I didn't apply to it. And yep, I just perfect. thought, um, like I, I take like 30 minutes to an hour every day to just apply to a couple of places and uh, yeah, keep things moving. Yeah, perfect. So let's let's aim for maybe, um, you know, by the end of uh, basically when we when we do this call again next Sunday to have you have applied to pretty much every place on All that right. spreadsheet if that if that works for you. Yeah, sure. I think uh, yeah, that that way you can do like, you know, seven or eight places a day. It's not too brutal, but yeah, yeah. I think it, that should work with the timing. Okay, cool. So I'm now going to share my screen with you and then I'll eventually uh, go ahead and put up um, you know, a picture of this on uh, the actual video eventually, but uh, can you see my screen at the moment? Yeah. Okay. So basically, this is just kind of my like lead coding sanity check, I'll call it, mm. in terms of topics that I feel people should kind of know going into the interviews. Um, and this is like really high level stuff, right? Of course, you can know all these and still get a question that just trips you up in the moment, and that happens to me all the time. Yeah, but I think that, you know, just knowing these high level topics at least prepares you to succeed the majority of the time you know, maybe 50 to 75% of the time. And, you know, a lot of the time, as long as you apply to enough places, that, that results in at least one job offer. Yeah. And, you know, combined with lead code practice. So I'm gonna just go through these and let me know if you have any questions about them, but I just wanna make sure that, at least for the most part, you're kind of familiar with these algorithms and, and know them pretty well. And if you do, then, you know, we're in good shape. And if not, I'd just recommend brushing up on them. It's just kind of like a, you know, a sanity check and just like a blanket statement of I'm prepared to, to handle these questions. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, sure. First one is just a raise, pretty simple, uh, you know. And when I when I put all these topics here, it means you know know the time complexity of all the operations as well, yeah. and and space complexity. So a raise, you know, basic for the most part. Um, all the main sorting algorithms, which are you know you basically have the n log n ones, which are quick sort and merge sort, and then you don't really have to know these by heart, but selection sort and insertion sort are just n squared ones that are kind of like the, you know, the brute force, more obvious ways of doing things. Uh, that all sound familiar? Yeah. Well, I've okay, been through cool. the, yeah, so the just sorting aspect. Yeah, I've done, I'm there. So yeah, just just call me out. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you know most of this stuff, but just call me out if you don't, and I'll just go through these for the sake of the video and yeah, yeah, sure. just mentorship in general. But yeah, binary search, login on a sorted list, got linked lists and doubly linked lists, how to implement those, the data structures that you would use to do that, the operations, like possibly reversing them, or you know, adding and removing nodes from them, the corresponding time complexities, uh, stacks and queues, you know, FIFO or, or rather, uh, you know, LIFO versus FIFO, 
uh, hash maps just in terms of getting O of 1 accesses, adds, deletes, all that uh, comes in handy for a ton of these like prefix sum problems. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, using recursion in general. Uh, and that's just kind of, you know, more important for doing things like tree traversals and graph traversals. Uh, dynamic programming. You're familiar with the, the knapsack problem? Yeah. yeah. Like the, Perfect. Like the one with the coins, like a zero yeah, one exactly. knapsack or an unbounded knapsack. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Uh, trees, you know, binary, binary search trees but also like tries. Um, I've been asked, you know, prefix detection problems before and I, I completely failed those and so now I, I make sure to learn about tries. Um, heaps and priority queues, you know, you implement a priority queue with a heap, which you implement yeah. with an array, all of that stuff in, uh, in log n for the most part in terms of pops. Uh, Pre-order tree traversal, post-order tree traversal, in-order tree traversal, just knowing what those are and how you would use recursion in order to do them. Yeah. Um, graphs in terms of, you know, know how to use them both as like uh, classes, right? So you have a node class or edge classes, but also as an adjacency matrix where you have a, a 2D list with ones and zeros to represent an edge. Um, and then knowing how to BFS and DFS through graphs, making sure not to, you know, accidentally go through a cycle multiple times or something like that. Uh, Dijkstra's shortest path, just finding the quickest path from node A to B in a graph uh, with dynamic programming. And then the last thing is the topological sort uh, for basically an, uh, an acyclic graph uh, so that you can order the nodes. And that's really good for these like prerequisite problems. There's one where it's like, you know, you have a bunch of college classes and there's prerequisites and, yeah. you know, you just have to be able to topological sort the nodes. Uh, so for the most part, does that all sound familiar? Yeah, pretty much. I think like the weakest points that I have is like trees and graphs at mm -hmm. this point. That's where I'm sure. weakest, yeah. That's what I'm working and on currently. Yeah, and I would say, yeah, de definitely, if, if you know that to be your weakest point, then definitely focus on yeah. those types of problems. Um, you want to be able to, to kind of DFS and BFS, you know, like the back yeah. of your hand, just bang that out. And the easier that you can think about, uh, you know, the easier that you can kind of just do a depth first search or a breadth first search in an interview, you know, the more time that leaves you to actually think about kind of the nuances of the problem yeah. itself. Yeah, so cool. Makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So let's, I guess, just, you know, we'll, we'll keep this call pretty quick for the most part since there's not too many updates, but it sounds like just to recap, at this point, we're mostly sending out apps. Uh, you're going to keep lead coding and, you know, just as they come in, uh, work on all that stuff. I'm thinking for next yeah, exactly. week, since it sounds like you have some behavioral interviews coming up, what I'll do is uh, I'll just grill you on, you know, like five behavioral questions and we can workshop your answers. But, you know, it seems like for the most part, you know the path from here, right? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, yeah, cool. regarding the the interview process, actually what I think is like my m main weakness would be the behavior around, because as you probably noticed, like I'm not a native English speaker and like, right. expressing myself in English isn't yeah. the, like the easiest thing, yeah. And that totally makes sense to me. I think, yeah, for the most part, behavioral interviews there's really only like 10 or so possible questions that you're going to get asked and you can really rehearse those answers. You know, it's always just like, tell me about a time that, you know, you faced a challenge. Uh, it's always tell me about a time that, you know, someone in your group wasn't really willing to collaborate or, you, you know, they weren't handling their share of the work. Uh, you know, tell me about this or that experience. And we can think about some answers that are going to kind of, you know, be tailored to your experience because when it comes to behavioral questions, you always want to think about what they want to hear from you. And for new grads, generally, they want to hear that you're coachable, they want to hear that you have some experience, and they want to hear that uh, you know, you're capable of resolving problems when they come up and communicating with your team members in order to ensure that you know, deadlines are being met, or, or not necessarily that deadlines are being met, but more so that if challenges come up along the way, you're willing to kind of uh, alert people early and not just kind of keep working on your own trying to meet some deadline that's impossible to meet. Okay, cool. So yeah, you know what to do for next week. Let's keep, uh, yeah, start thinking about some uh, experiences of yours because I'll grill you on, you know, like I said, five or six behavioral questions next time and we can, we can work through those. All right, everybody. Thanks for making it this far. If you have, you're very patient. Definitely more so than my ex-girlfriend. 
Uh, as for the rest of you, um, you know, I'm hoping that these videos have kind of helped you in order to get further on your own journeys. Um, I know there are a lot of steps that are seemingly pretty simple, but I think a lot of engineers kind of forget to do a lot of these basic things in their own application process, and it probably ends up hurting them down the line. So I feel like outlining all of these processes to someone like Amr should really help everyone else. Uh, as always, let me know in the comments what I can change about these videos, but I hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one.